Let's talk about conic sections. Conic sections are some of the oldest curves in mathematics, dating back to at least the ancient Greeks. So there are several ways to think of conic sections. One way is that to think of it as an analogous to how if you take a curve in the co Cartesian coordinate plane of degree 1 in x and y, you get a line. And so analogous to that, what do you get if you get take a curve of degree 2? You can have a conic section. And there are these three main types of conic sections. There's an ellipse like this. Well, more symmetrical than that. But it's a closed loop. And a circle is a special type of ellipse. Or there's the parabola that goes off to that in one, uh, one curve goes off to infinity in both directions. And then there's a hyperbola, which has two separate parts and goes off to infinity in all those directions. So like this, with these two separate parts go going off to infinity. So now, another way to think of these conic sections is in terms of what you get if you take a cone and you take a cross section. Hence the name. So if you take this, cr this cone going off to infinity in both directions, and you take it with a plane, you can get an ellipse like this. Or if you tilt it until it's parallel with this, you can get a parabola. Like that. Or if you tilt it more so that it will hit the bottom cone, you can get a hyperbola. And then there is a third way of looking at it, which will be the most useful way for our purposes right at the present, which is if you take any point A in the plane and any line L not passing through A, and then you also take any positive real number lambda, then you take a geometric locus of all the points p in this plane, such that the distance from p to a is exactly lambda times the distance from p to l, denoted delta p l. So for example, if lambda is 2, then you might have this point on here, because this is twice this, this distance. So it's not immediately clear why all these definitions say essentially the same thing, giving you this same family of ellipse, parabola, hyperbola. But let's at least see why these give these degree, why this locus will give you a degree 2 equation. So let's introduce Cartesian coordinates. But notice that there aren't any coordinates already placed on here. So we can take whatever coordinates we want, whatever coordinates are most helpful to us. So let's assume that this is the y-axis. I mean, this is the x-axis with equation y equals 0. And then a can be anywhere we want as long as it's not on this line. So let's zoom in or zoom out, whatever, to, get the, to set a to be 0, 1. So what is the set of points p? that will satisfy this, x comma y. Well, the distance from p to a is this by the distance formula. Now, lambda is still lambda. And this distance is going to be the absolute value of y. Because like, if you start out like 7, 6, 5 taking points with these y coordinates, the distance stays that, but then at 0, it's 0, and then 
negative 1, the y coordinate negative 1 gives you a distance of 1, two, negative 2 gives you a distance of 2, and so on. So you get the absolute value of y. And now this looks not very nice, but you can actually make it nice if you square both sides. That gets rid of the square root and the absolute value signs. Because, and the reason that we can do this is because both sides are non-negative. And the square of any non-neg and two non-negative real numbers are equal if and only if their squares are equal, as can be ar arrived at with a little bit of thought. Uh, I'll leave that as, as they all say, an exercise for the reader or the viewer in this case. <laughs> so if we square both sides, you get this on the left-hand side, and then lambda squared is lambda squared, and then the square of the absolute value of y is just y squared. And now this gives you a curve of degree 2, because you can expand this to y squared minus 2y plus 1, and then subtract this over here. Grouping terms, we get this equation. x squared plus 1 minus lambda squared y squared minus 2y plus 1 equals 0, which has this form. So we see that all these loci, 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 are of this degree 2 curve form, which will, be most, which will probably be the most useful thing for us from now on. But we still haven't really probed all the interconnections between these three definitions. And I still haven't gotten to some of the most interesting properties of these curves. And so if you want to see more, check out my next video and all the videos after it. But check out Conic Sections Part 2. Thank you for watching, and I hope you follow me on Twitter at Luke Robitaille. Thank you.